Welcome back. It has been a minute, but it's time for episode 163, I'm pretty sure, of the 359 <laughs> podcast. Holy cow, guys. It's so good to see you. How are you, Alfred Ng and Roger Chang? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm a little tired after our, our journeys in the uh, CNET Road Crew, Road Show, yeah. and uh, CES, but I'm feeling good. A little bit of context, right? We, we haven't had a YouTube stream in a while, largely because, well, first week of the year, we were at CES. Second week, our intrepid producer was out in Detroit for the auto show, uh, so we couldn't really do the YouTube stream with him. We were able to keep the podcast going, but, you know. You need someone here pushing the buttons. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit more complicated with the stream. Uh, and so this is it. This is our first week back on YouTube. Um, we've got a, we've got a great show for you. We're talking about Nintendo. We didn't get a chance to talk about it last last week because uh, the news hit hit on Friday. Friday right. Yeah. So we're gonna break it down. Alfred was actually at the event. Uh, we'll talk about Nintendo Switch. We'll also talk about uh, Nokia and BlackBerry trying to get back in the game and whether or not they have a shot. So as usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. We will get to them after the podcast. Right on. It's good to see everybody again. Thanks for coming back. And we'll be in the chat in three minutes and 59 seconds from exactly three, two. Welcome to the 359, where we talk about the top tech news of the day and all the crap you want to throw in. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ng. Nintendo is back with the Switch. The console costs $300 and launches on March 3rd, but it's already sold out in pre-orders and it's almost impossible to get. Now, Nintendo already had a decent 2016 between Pokemon Go and Super Mario Run. Will this be Nintendo's year to dominate gaming? I don't think it will be. <laughs> okay. Um, I, they are targeting, um, that's kind of their goal right now. They don't want the whole family-friendly, these games are for kids kind of demographic mm -hmm. anymore. With these, If you notice in these commercials that they've been putting out for the Switch, it's all, you know, millennials, young adults, people with disposable income right. who are playing it, you know, and they're showing them going on planes, you know, on the way to work, like on a bus. So plane. so this isn't really the, like the casual gamer market no. that they really had hit uh, success with, with mm -hmm. the Wii, right? No, they're aiming for more of a cross between, basically, they, they want that casual gamer, but they also want the hardcore gamers to come back for this. Right. Um, they're, again, aiming at people who, who have jobs. Right. If, if, if you notice, you know, people traveling, that's kind of, but also, you know, they they they've been stressing that this is a home console. Like they they don't yeah, want you to so, say that. So it's, break, break it down. Break down the switch. Like why why is it called a switch? Um and and what what what's the appealing aspect of this? System? Well, it's a tablet form factor. So it's basically you can take it out from the dock on your television mm -hmm. and then still play it like a tablet. You know, on the bus or you know going anywhere. Um, but and even, the experience is the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the only difference is the on TV it, it has an output of 1080p. Okay. Whereas on the tablet its maximum output is 720p. Right. And, but, so, and there's these Joy-Con controllers yeah. that basically they they come off of the controller mm -hmm. and they attach on the tablet so you can go you can do gaming on the go. Yeah. And, or you can even use them as motion sensor controllers and oh. kind of like the Wiimotes when you played with them. Okay, yeah. They have a game yeah, called yeah. One Two Switch. It's kind of like um like a cowboy like duel. Quick draw. Yeah, yeah. yeah so okay. like you pull it out and then you know. And is there some sort of game where you're milking a cow? Yes, yes, there is. Um, Why? Because it's the it's Nintendo. It's supposed to be you know fun and interactive. And it's kind of like a party icebreaker kind of game. So they're still going for that demographic on that. That's that's really interesting. Like I said, it's three hundred dollars, which is a pretty reasonable price, especially given the Xbox. Yeah. Uh, and the, the PlayStation are kind of similarly priced at this point. Uh, and it's coming on March 3rd, but it's almost impossible to get already. So mm -hmm. next up, our own Jessica Dullcourt has an analysis on the return of BlackBerry and Nokia. Remember those brands? Those story names were have a lot in common right now. I mean, they've both struggled the last few years. I mean, they're pretty much irrelevant. Um, and now they're, they're essentially licensed brands. Other companies have sort of taken over the brands and slapping them on top of Android phones. Alfred, have you ever owned a Nokia or BlackBerry phone? Yes, I had the indestructible Nokia with a uh, snake. Oh, yes. And um, I also had the BlackBerry Pearl uh, right before I switched to the uh, Android uh, G1. Now, it's interesting. The BlackBerry Pearl is really, it's one of those phones that, that people credit as uh, bringing the smartphone market out to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Mainstream because it, it was sort of a, a slimmer phone. You know, it, had, it still had physical keyboards, had that little Pearl ball. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it was a huge hit, yeah. Right until the iPhone came and kind of destroyed all of that. Um, but it's just—it's interesting that uh, these other companies—it's um, these other companies have basically paid to use the the, the names. Um, and it's just—do you think that there's value enough in those names to actually bring these guys back? I don't think there is. I think if the phones are you know 
are dud as far as like quality goes. Right. It doesn't matter what their names are. Now, and they're going in two different directions. Like no, the Nokia Six, uh, which was announced a few weeks ago, it's going to China. It's more of a low end phone. Uh, Alcatel is actually making the new BlackBerry phone. It's right now it's code name Mercury. Uh, it looks to be more of a high end affair. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if any of this actually works out. But you know, I, I'm a little skeptical. So for more of these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Alfred Ang. Thanks for listening. First and foremost, for those asking, the banana on the seat is my lunch. Oh, I thought it was what? for scale. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Maybe if we had a Nintendo <laughs> Switch in here to compare is that, it to. Is that your entire lunch? Because that's kind of sad. Well, that was part of my lunch. All I just right. I well, threw a, it on the chair. That's a good breakfast, it was not, a, not and, lunch. Well, it's a little late for breakfast in New York. <laughs> that's true. Um, first and foremost, the price thing is definitely a polarizing factor, which I'm kind of surprised by. I didn't think 300 sounded that well, bad for a game console. Here's the thing, though. Are the controllers like... are $80. Oh. And that's like way more than an Xbox or a PlayStation. Wait, 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 wait. So yeah, the controllers. I've heard that across wait, the board. How the, many controllers? Especially the pro the, controllers. You mean how many controllers no, comes with the system though? The the two things that go on the side of it, the Joy Cons. Okay. So one, if you want to just get one, that's fifty dollars, and that's if you like kind of want to do multiplayer with your friends, you know. Oh. On top of the three hundred for the console. No, that comes no, no, no. with that comes with it, and then three hundred fifty gets you a two player setup. No, 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 no. It gets oh, you geez. half of a two. It gets you setup. half of it. It gets so you know how there's the two controllers on the side. Uh, yeah, each one on its own is fifty dollars. No, but if you, you want... got to sell them in pairs. But yeah, they're eighty bucks as a pair. Yeah, they're eighty dollars as a pair. Why would you buy one if you want to milk if a cow? Want, yeah, clearly. Okay, that's, if you want to milk, if a you cow. want to just offer it as a single like thing for somebody else, because you don't need both controllers to do multiplayer. You can use multiplayer to, like one on one. But there's certain games where you do need both of them. Like their game Arms, which is kind of like Wii Boxing. I saw that. That looked kind of fun. Yeah, uh, but you need both the controllers to do it. You can't. I can't you can't. imagine many yeah, of the games not needing both. Yeah, why would you yeah. want to buy the one? Like I feel like it's an incomplete. If you experience. if you want to play the like little part. Although games, I guess you, you don't know? like the second one. They're kind of superfluous. I mean, go back to the Wii with the moat and the uh, the nunchuck. They weren't necessarily paired, right? You had to buy the nunchuck separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. There it is. There's yeah. a mentality. Wait, so. Ugh. When you're buying the but pair, but it wasn't eighty dollars. But when you're buying the pair, do you also gain like that centerpiece that connects the two? Or no? How much is that part? I haven't looked at that price yet. Wow, wow. So that's I mean, actually, the costs really start to add up after a while. Yes, that's okay. and that's the cost issue here. It's okay. not that oh, it's a three hundred dollar console. Because I thought the three, about I the price? actually thought three hundred dollars was not terrible for for like a brand new console. But like once you start, but now when you start stuff, nickel and diming it. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing, too, is like, why am I paying $300 for a console that only has five games at launch? Oh. But Jake says it's still $100 less than buying a PS4 or Xbox One with the one controller. Yeah. However, after this comes out, I cannot imagine a world where the both of those don't drop price to compete. Yeah. Well, uh, do you, I mean, uh, is this system really competing against the Xbox and PS4? No, because also in the chat, and it's very well known knowledge that Nintendo's not for. Hardcore gamers, right. anymore. no, and that, that's yeah, yeah. that's fair. They they want to be the family game center. They right. they're cornering that market. Yeah, it's a harder market to kind of even, configure. Even well, it's, it's I feel like they're really going through this this kind of but tight, tight hole though because they they, they want to be they don't want to be casual gamers, but they also don't want to be hardcore gamers. Yeah. so they've got this like super thin. Air, just no, that's what they they're, they're, they're basically themselves. looking for kind of like the nostalgia value of it. Like, I mean, the, no, the, game the Wii the, was good for casual games. Yes. Though. That's why it was such a huge hit. Totally. The and Wii it's like was, a family board game night. Right. The yeah. Wii U was trying to be a little bit differently. I think that's why it failed. And yeah. so I don't really know that's what clunky. the Switch is targeting. I think it's, again, it, it's targeting, you know, working like teen, not teens, sorry, but like the millennials. Working, yeah. Working the kids. like millennials with disposable incomes. They, they keep showing people traveling and playing the games. And unless, you know, all these teens and families are traveling together all the time on planes to play video games, right. it's it's going to be, you know, people that have jobs that, like, require them to travel. Remember when the Sega Dreamcast had the uh, um, VMU unit, the memory card with the little... Is that the thing with the screen The little on screen. It? Oh, yeah. 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 So you could take a portion of your game yeah. with you. Sega did it first. <laughs> yeah, but that was not... That was not well implemented. Uh, no. So, but this, like, the idea... Is, I mean, I kind of like the idea that, like, I can basically play Zelda on my TV, and then when I've got to go, I can just yeah. take the screen from my dock, plug in the controllers. And but just like bring play. that over to a friend's house too. That could right. be fun. Yeah. And I, I don't like this only online multiplayer world that we've built for ourselves. I still yeah. like that, you know, bowl of popcorn, two liter amount yeah. of do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's play some games. Let's throw some Halo. Of course, that won't be on Nintendo. But my point right. was, by this time, by March rolls around, PS4, Xbox One, they've been around a minute. It's time for a price drop. That's true. In yeah, general. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if, if you just... Whether they are trying to fight with Nintendo or not. Yeah, it, right. 
I mean, there's like a deal about every two weeks now for those where you can get like a, a pack. It's of the bundles. For, it's yeah, usually bundles for now. like two fifty. Yeah, and what yeah, do we yeah. think we're gonna see bundle wise for Nintendo? Probably when Splatoon two hits, right? Well, they've already kind of got like a collector's a edition thing with uh, Zelda. Legend of Zelda. Zelda, of course, yeah. but that's yeah. like one of the very few, which is another thing that they're kind of faltering on launch titles. Yeah, they're really yeah. light in the well, launch. Well, that's that's going to be a launch title. That I think that's one the, of the few, though. Yeah, that that's going to be the, I the mean, big one. Although, I mean, after seeing the game on. in action, like that's a pretty sweet. It, launch oh, title. sure. I'm yeah. not trying to discredit Zelda at all, but yeah. I'm saying their library's thin. Yes, but yes. we do have a lot to look forward to before the end of the year. So yeah. I'm imagining a Splatoon bundle and a Super Mario. Right. Yeah, the Mario Odyssey Odyssey yes. bundle. Yeah. What? Did, by the way, did you see the Mario Odyssey game in action? Like, doesn't he go into the real world where he's like? I think he's only in the real world. They in go like, back to his Brooklyn in, apartment in in New Donk City. Right. Well, in the real world, like. Humans are like human scale, and Mario is still yeah. like a his little cartoon oh, scale, weird, yeah. which is super weird for me. Like, I the thought they did what what he stylized similarly. Yeah. That's the is average plumber height. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Sorry to any plumbers watching. That this. really threw me off. Like, is so? Is he not human? Then is he a car- like? Is this a statement that Nintendo is trying to make about Mario? That he's- it's an odyssey. He- all right, you know, remember perhaps in, all the radiation from the Mushroom Kingdom has warped yeah. his appearance and he comes back and <laughs> his mother's taking, like Mario after taking all those mushrooms. What in the same happened kingdom? to you? I'm just yeah. saying, like Homer's Odyssey when he sees like the but Cyclops and all these like monsters and stuff. This could be Mario's version of it. That's true. There's a thought. I think it looks sharp. I mean, it's few and far in between that a Mario game isn't fun. I just true. hope that Mario can pay rent in New Donk City. Not likely, <laughs> from experience. Well, I mean, he's like grabbing coins from everyone. He's got money to spare, right? <laughs> he's all, like, don't worry, I'm just, I've grabbed my coins. I'm I just, just imagine like the the movie version of this, where it's a guy just running around like shoving his hand down pockets, grabbing <laughs> money and running, and people are like, what's happening? We, well, yeah. we saw the and movie just version. Like, it did not turn out well. <laughs> it did not turn out curb well. stomping the mushrooms growing up on Fifth <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> Hey, shout out to Pancreatus of old Nintendo. More like no thanks though. Wow, oh, that's a good rhyme. That was wow. sharp. Yeah. Who out there is interested in the Switch? I mean, I think there's I, nothing I wrong. I think it's clearly, interesting. Clearly people I are logistically wrong with it, but who here thinks that they're going that direction? Are you going to drop what you have? You have, have you changed plans? Has this really enticed you? We're interested to hear. I mean, clearly people are interested, right? If you can't even get this thing anymore, it's sold out yeah. everywhere. There, there's definitely demand, but whether or not there's long-term demand is still a big question for me. I think I think that's part of Nintendo's plan to make sure that there's long term demand though. That's why instead of you know packing all their games at, at launch, which, right. it, which it used to do, which is the common strategy, they've yeah, decided yeah. we're going to spread it out. So you know by the time you get bored of you know Breath of the I mean, Wild, that, Splatoon two's out. That kind of makes sense. Like I, yeah. I don't like I, I have attention for like one or two games at a time. Yeah. Like, I don't need a huge library right off the bat. But what I want is a commitment for mm-hmm. games down the line through the life of the system. Uh, what do they say about third-party developer support? Like, uh, I mean, I, they've got the first-party titles yes. down, obviously, with Mario and Zelda, but, like, who else is jumping on this bandwagon? Well, um, Skyrim was, you know, heavily promoted okay. for it. Okay. Um, they also one of the NBA 2K games. Got it. Um, hold on, I'm trying but to... But no, no Grand Theft Auto. No, no. no that's, Final that's Fantasy. Never been I don't think you're ever going to see yeah. Grand Theft Auto on a Nintendo console, but Final Fantasy does have a chance of coming yeah. back, depending on where... Yeah. What are they? It's, 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 is it still Square Enix? Where does that company yeah, it's stand out? Square Enix. Yeah. It's, it was a mess. Um, Sonic for a while. Mania is one of their big titles. Sonic the first Mania. Bomberman game, uh, new one at least, that looked since 2010. Cool. Oh, wow. That yeah, looked oh, cool. Brand new game. Yeah. Nice. Back to the roots. Yeah. yeah. I, I was actually playing Bomberman, you know, like the night before the announcement, too. So. Just getting ready, getting in the mood. No, I didn't know it was, gonna, it was uh, happening. I just play Bomberman regularly. Oh, wow. It's a good game. It is. Speaking of Sonic Mania, we're pretty sure that Sonic 2017 project's coming to Switch as well, right? The new 3D one. The uh, non-retro I throwback. Not. I really... <laughs> I think it is. No, this is... Sonic Mania is the retro throwback. It's right, right. But though. Sonic 2017 is the new... Oh, it's like God. the brand new... There's no full project. title for it yet. It looks like Sonic Generations 2. We saw the teaser for yeah. it a while ago. It's I'm very skeptical coming of any 3D Sonic game, to Fair. be honest. I don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. Sonic Mania looks I'm pretty just, cool, though. We're, we're all speculating here, yes. seeing what's going on. It's Mania I'm interested in. That, yeah, I, I that'll think bring they're taking back. the same approach that Capcom did with like Mega Man 9. Yeah. So, oh, are they bringing back Street Fighter 2? Yes. That's kind um, of exciting. But it's not even that much of like a bringing it back. It's it's for its like 20th or anniversary. Oh, uh, okay. Or so. Um and the and the Is big that exclusive to Nintendo or Well, kind of because they they're taking um they they came out with Super Street Fighter 2 Ultra HD for the PlayStation 3 uh, a few years ago. Okay, yeah. And the graphics look pretty much the same on that. It's basically a remake but just with like better graphics. I guess some of okay. the additions are there's like party mode now where you and a friend can play together to beat up the computers. Oh. They had a clip of like Ken and Ryu just like ganging up on M. Bison. And one, 
Really? Yeah. I'd right. play that. That'd be cool. And then there's two new exclusive characters. There, there's Evil Ryu, which has been in um, other Street Fighter games, and there's also Violent Ken, which apparently finally I'm like Wait, I guess he they, wasn't violent before. Yeah. Do they? So what? Like, I wonder is, if that's is original Ken just sort of like passive Ken now? I, I don't by know. By default. <laughs> I wonder if that's some kind of allegory to modern they, America. Uh, but do they do anything different, or are they just like slightly different colors? There's like different like frame. The Mortal Kombat trick, okay, something like Colors, yeah. palette swap, yeah. palette swap. I think a large consensus in the chat is generally like, "This looks okay." I don't know if it's going to boom on the launch day. A lot of people are like, "I'm gonna wait and see." Yeah, I, I, I think they're wrong. I mean, look at all the pre-orders that have been like sold out already. Um, I mean, there are a lot of Nintendo. I'm not fan saying it's not though. gonna sell. Yeah, then what? what but I don't think they're gonna break any records on this one. Oh. No. No. For um, sure. I'd be however, int- however, Bones says, uh, looks like the best Nintendo console since GameCube. Wow. I don't think he's wrong. Wow. I, did, I think I can agree with that. In terms of I love what, my GameCube. In terms of what, though? In terms of quality of gaming? I think in terms like, of... Zelda was a big factor big in package. buying it for Harrison, Harrison Hale. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the Zelda game looked beautiful, I must say. I can, I can a lot agree of, A lot that. of pre-orders. There were a lot of pre-orders, yeah. like, like right here in the chat. Oh, do we know what backwards compatibility is going to be like? It's not going to have any. Are they going to have a similar arcade or what? I think what is they, it? Have, like the, they the have the Nintendo like a, Shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've yeah. got like an emulator. For they're they're older working. Games, yeah, right? they're they're working on a, a virtual console for it. It's new membership um, subscription. You know, so this is the first time that Nintendo is actually going to make you pay for your subscription mm-hmm. for online services. Sounds about right. Um, that was coming a long time. Yeah, ago. yeah. I know. Um, but one of the things that they're doing with it as a reward for any subscriber is you get a free Nintendo NES or you know Super Nintendo game every month. But you only get it for that month. Yeah, that, that's like that's kind anymore. of like I don't know. That's what would a uh, uh, what? That's a little bittersweet for me. Like having the game for the month, and then like, I think oh, it's gone. I mean, you could buy it. I'm sure. Yeah, but I don't, it's a free game. Like <laughs> Nintendo, no, Microsoft and Sony give free games every yeah, month, right? Yeah. And you keep those games. Yeah. What titles would be a uh, a deal maker for you? Like we talked about Mario, we talked about Splatoon. Here, I'm gonna bring up Mario Kart. Mario, Mario Kart. Mario, Mario, yeah, like, that's well, coming. But a new Mario Kart. Uh, like they've got, me, they're just revamping look, Mario Kart Eight, right? Just. So this yeah, is what we have schedule wise coming out between Arms, Puyo Puyo, Tetris, Xenoblade, Sonic, FIFA. Um, King Guri says if Madden gets on there, it's a done deal for him. Oh, I'm sure that would be a done yeah. deal for well, a yeah, lot of people. They've got EA Sports there, so yeah, you sure imagine Madden's, Madden's going to be there. Look, just give me the GameCube uh, Virtual Console and give me Super Smash Brothers Melee HD. I That's can't all- imagine what they're going to uh, do with yeah. the next ma- with will, the next Smash though. I will buy a Switch just for that and have that one game on it. I just give wow. me Super Smash Brothers. That's all I want. <laughs> Who doesn't want Smash? Come on, everybody loves Smash. Yes, I've, I've specifically many many hours melee me. on it. Um, but yeah, what uh, what deal breakers or deal breakers or makers in the uh, chat were interested to see what uh, what's going to bring you to the switch? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think back. Like for me, I would love to see a new Prince of Persia. Which oh yeah, hasn't been exclusive mm-hmm. to anything, but right, right. I would be interested to see the mechanics of work in this, and I think that's a good platform for it personally. Mm-hmm. Um, if it went more the stylized like the Prince of Persia. Like the reboot one that came out in the Xbox 360 in like what 2008, uh, seven, like something the, like that. The gritty reboot. No, no, it went kind of the other way. It was more cell shaded. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, I'd like to see something it. like yeah. that. Um, I'd love to see um, Star Wars come back to Nintendo. I want to see like a Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Exactly, Rogue yeah, Squadron. Yeah, we need awesome. Rogue Squadron again. Yeah, now yeah. that we got Rogue One, we need like right the Chronicles of Rogue One, the game yeah. in Rogue Squadron format. I'm definitely into that. Hey, here's another bold question. Do you think this is just like a souped up NVIDIA? Well, yeah, it's running on the same like kind of engine. But didn't they do this exact same setup? Yeah. What year was that? Um, 2014 or 2015. Yeah, but with the shield? Yeah, it's two years old. Yeah, I guess so. And they actually just updated it too, the shield. Except, yeah, this is. But it's more, it's not. This doesn't run on Android, right? Because that would be. Cla- Claudio's a man after my own heart. Metroid. We, oh yeah, yeah, yeah Metroid. There's a, there's Metroid. A lot of, we haven't had Metroid in a while, especially with this new system too. That like the way that they're trying to do it, where you can do multiplayer if you like can hand off one controller to a friend. But then it comes to this whole like screen watching kind of thing. Yeah, which, yeah. but but if two people have their own switches, then there we go. That's uh, where it gets interesting. Uh, yeah. Imagine the multiplayer wait, can two capabilities. Switches talk to each other. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, they can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They they showed it off in one of their um. 
in the first trailer for so it. Theoretically, when, when you could that, bring your Switch over your yeah. friend's place. When they did that Splatoon um, tournament. So the idea yeah. is like... Lane says they need a Pokemon game. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they're going to put a Pokemon game on it. I'm sure on. they will. Okay, they yeah, will. but Pokemon, Pokemon a, Snap 2. Take the Switch out in the field. And get the oh, and get the yeah. augmented reality. If they're gonna do that Go, though, but Pokemon but Snap. If they're gonna do have... that though, they would do that on the 3DS, which has Earth. the camera on it. You're right. And Pokemon has always been exclusively. Uh, like you're right. DS. But it's you're not. Right. It's not Wi-Fi connector, is it? Or how how is it connected? No, yeah, it's, it's it is. There's got Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. But uh, is it um? It is, well, there's no cell connection. Like Pokemon Go wouldn't theoretically work on this thing. No. Yeah. Unless, I'm thinking outside the box. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. An interesting note that um Reggie brought up when I spoke to him. Um, well, when me and Scott spoke to him. Yep. Um, so battery life is a big concern for it. So it's only got about like two to six hours of battery life, depending on what game that you're playing. It's a pretty big scope. Yeah. Uh, they said Legend of Zelda will run you about three to four hours wireless. Oh. Um, but it has USB-C on it and, um, battery packs, like the, the, like power banks, like yeah. they'll end up working for it with USB-C. You theoretically plug into like, if you're, on, I'm thinking of like an airplane, the USB outlet, you yeah. plug into there. Oh, yeah. All right. But also, like, the fact that it has, like, battery packs on it is that's really interesting to me for that. Yeah. that. That was a good move on their part. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you brought this up in your your interview, though. Like, this is this is kind of a portable gaming device, but yes. they have the 3DS, and so, yeah. which is a huge hit for them. How do these two coexist? As much as, you know, Nintendo wants to say they're not going to cannibalize each other and yeah. it's not going to cut into their market, it definitely will. I think the way that they're trying to keep them apart is the types of games. Okay. That they're gonna, because he he's saying that these know, are higher quality games. Though, yeah, right? that and Nintendo is basically saying you know we're gonna keep the games for the 3DS kind of more like kitty and you know family okay. friendly okay. kind of stuff, uh, which makes sense. I, as a parent, I don't know if you'd want to buy your kid a three hundred dollar console that because it's portable, it's probably easy to lose or break. Yeah, yeah, okay, um, yeah. And that as opposed to getting your kid a you know hundred to hundred fifty dollar like handheld uh 3ds right um where that's not like as likely to happen right it folds in it's a little bit more yeah. durable yeah like that's the thing like yeah if if i but if i have a kid old enough to have one of these things like i'd be kind of uncomfortable with them like lugging this tablet like yeah. device around like just like i'd be uncomfortable with them you know with an ipad right like yeah they can just drop and break it i've seen that happen all you the wonder time. if they'll make cases though like they do for mobile phones but and what if they make the case if they make the case around the controller as well yeah. like it's really kind of that's the, what that but, awkward yeah. setup is but then also yeah. as a kid though if i like want like i'm probably gonna want a switch as opposed to a 3ds where it's just one of those things like if i get if there's better games on it right and there's you know more engaging like gameplay and then would there's you, all these cool online services question though would you feel comfortable playing the switch on the subway probably yeah yeah i read my tablet on the subway all I right like i'll be like i feel like just a target for a mugger at that point. Just Everything's a, a target screen. for a mugger. Yeah, I'm always a target for a mugger. Yeah, that's true. Jerome is wondering if Nintendo plans to go VR with a detachable screen and maybe an additional headset. I think they'd have to introduce additional hardware for this because I yeah. can't imagine. Like, I, it's a pretty a big VR. exaggerated. It's a pretty big screen for VR. The Switch looks, it's, but imagine the a Switch Google is... Cardboard with this strapped to your face. Oh, man. That's a good look um, for you. Yeah. <laughs> right now, there's no plans for VR, but they do. the camera does have like AR capabilities. So I'm, Okay. I am interested in kind of like if they're doing something similar like Pokemon Go because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's on the move. You can, do I can see, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, for sure. Animal Crossing, right. Dark Souls, Dark, Star Dark, Fox. Dark Souls. Ooh, Star favorite. Fox. Yes. I can't. How did I not remember Star Fox? Because of the last one. The, yeah, the last one came. It was terrible. It wasn't terrible, but it was, it was severely you underwhelming. Just get, a, yeah. just get a 3DS and play the Star Fox 64 remake on it. That's what I do. It's great. It's, I have a phone. I don't need another portable device to lug around. <laughs> um, Come on, people. Nintendo, just get your Star Fox into I don't phone. see... I don't Donkey Kong Country. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was less... Something's less enthusiastic about that one. But that's got a hardcore following. Oh, yeah. Super. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure all these first, you know, these first party games are coming. They have to be. I right? think Animal Crossing, though, they're going to keep that. Pokemon on Stadium, DS. probably. Yeah. It works better in that. Yeah. Wait, what the heck's Pokemon Stadium? It's It was pure battle. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Pokemon Stadium is the only game I can see them like bringing to the the Switch as because the 3DS ha is basically their kind of their headquarters for Pokemon games. You know how long That's it's true. How long people have been asking for a console version of, of Pokemon? It's just. I think they're keeping it on like handheld for a reason. That's dumb. I, I'm enjoying AVM uh, 3798 in the chat who's pointed out he wants 
GTA and COD, and it's like, yeah. we already know you're not getting a Switch, yeah. sir. But he points out the screen resolution makes it impossible for VR. It would be more pixelated than a Japanese porno. Wow. And that's not true because Whoa. the resolution for PSVR sucks. All right. And they still pull it off. The porn? <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody. All right. All right, guys. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a good place to wrap things up, actually. That was a good chat. It's yeah. good to be back in the saddle. Thanks, everyone, Absolutely. for joining us. And uh, maybe if we revisit Switch stuff, we'll have Bacalar in. Yes. Yeah. Bacalar or Scott, whenever. Unfortunately, they're both out. But uh, when, when they're both in, we could have a whole conversation. When we get more information about what's forthcoming with this Absolutely. console. Absolutely. So, as always, uh, if you liked anything you saw or heard here, check us out on CNET. Our podcast is also available on iTunes. Tune in, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, and Google Play Music. We'll see you all tomorrow. Later, guys. Thank you.